Welcome to World News America. At a meeting in a Moscow airport, Edward Snowden said he is renewing his plea to Russia for asylum. The man who leaked information about US government surveillance programs promised to stop releasing secret information as part of the deal, according to a Russian lawmaker who was there. The former National Security Agency contractor said he ultimately wants to go to Latin America. The US said today it would raise concerns if Russia gives him asylum. The BBC's Steve Rosenberg has this report. Moscow airport today looked more like Moscow circus. They'd been invited here by Edward Snowden, rights activists, lawyers and an MP. In Russia, Mr Snowden has been dubbed the invisible man. So were his guests sure they were going to find him? Uh, I don't know. I got the email signed by <laughs> Edward Snowden, uh, who invited me to come and, uh, and have a meeting. Pursued by the media, the delegation was led through the airport to the transit zone, which the fugitive intelligence analyst has made his home. For nearly three weeks, there's been a media frenzy around Edward Snowden. Journalists have been scouring Moscow airport for the slightest sign of him. Now, we're led to believe he's behind this door, but we're not allowed through. Uh, a little over one month ago, I had a family, a home in paradise, and I lived in great comfort. This amateur video from the meeting are the first images of Edward Snowden since he fled to Russia. Proof that he's still stuck at Moscow airport. <laughs> meeting over, Mr. Snowden's guests were back in the spotlight to announce that the 30-year-old American was requesting asylum in Russia, but only temporarily. Eventually, he wants to travel to Latin America. Did he say which particular country? Uh, he kept saying to Latin America, but I presume that he's pretty serious about Venezuela. That was my impression. Washington is unimpressed by all the publicity. Providing a propaganda platform for Mr. Snowden uh, runs counter to the Russian government's uh, previous declarations of Russia's neutrality and that they have, uh, and that they have no control over his presence in the airport. The Kremlin knows that America wants him back, but Russia's made it clear it won't be handing Edward Snowden over. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Moscow. Well, for more on the story, I'm joined now by Greg Miller, who's been covering Snowden's escapades for the Washington Post. Greg, thanks very much for joining us. So is he any closer to leaving this transit area where he's been holed up for the last few weeks? I think he is closer now. I mean, his, his decision to request asylum from Russia, I think, is designed in part to get him out of that transit area and into some someplace else in Moscow, at least until he can secure a, 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 a safe flight, safe passage to Latin America, which is, as he says, where he wants to end up over the long term. Now, he did actually withdraw his first um, application for asylum. What's actually changed? Well, I think probably the fact that he is, he is stuck there and perhaps the, the diversion of the Bolivian president's flight last week um, impressed upon him the idea that, uh, that it wasn't going to be easy for him to get out of, out of Russia, out of Moscow, and to a final destination. And it's going to take some time for him to work that out, and maybe he, he does not want to spend that time at the airport any longer. Now, what about Russian-U.S. relations? The U.S. clearly very unhappy about the whole situation. What could this do to jeopardize Moscow-Washington relations? Right. Well, the administration has been, has been sending two signals. They're a bit contradictory, right? On the one hand, this is not a big deal. This is not going to damage our relationship with, with Moscow. We have more important issues than Edward Snowden. But also you know, very, being very critical of the Russians, especially today. I mean, there were some, uh, some pointed comments from the White House spokesperson today about how the Russians allowed all of these human rights organizations in to meet Edward Snowden, who might not be allowed to operate elsewhere in that country. And isn't that ironic? Um, but I don't think it's, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're clearly, this, this White House is doing two things. They're trying to, to, um, to maintain this public posture that this is, this is not a huge deal for us. We'd sure we would like to get him, but behind the scenes, very frantically working diplomatically to block possible avenues of escape for him. And, and can they actually do that? Sure. 
Uh, sure. I mean, it, it's unclear whether ultimately they can prevent him from getting to a country like Venezuela, but, um, but the, the fact that they were able to divert the, the, uh, the, the aircraft for a head of state uh, in Europe um, indicate, is an indication of the kind of leverage they do have. And so the plot thickens. Greg Miller, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Well, the latest on this story is that four South American countries have said that they will recall their ambassadors from France, Italy, Spain and Portugal in protest at their decision to close their airspace to the Bolivian president's plane last week. Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela and Uruguay called the incident a hostile and discriminatory act which violated international law. Eva Morales' plane was denied access to some European airspace while travelling back to Bolivia from Russia over suspicions that Mr Snowden was on board.